When I tell people I'm in software engineering after doing my masters in mathematics, the very first question they ask me is, is it even possible to become a software engineer without a computer science degree? And I'm like, yes, definitely it's possible. Today in this video, I'm basically going to share with you my background, how and when I decided to get into tech, the roadmap I followed, the challenges I faced. Not only this, I'll also be sharing with you all my job search process and how I finally landed a job in the tech industry. So if you're ready to hear my story and learn from my experience, let's get started. Talking about my background, I was very much interested in mathematics back in school and that was the reason why I chose to do my undergrad and consequently my postgrad in mathematics. Got a job via campus placement which was paying me decently well but the work was really not technical. It was a non-technical job and the work that I was doing was repetitive kind of boring. So I had two options either stay in my current job and earn whatever I was earning or pursue something that was more exciting. So I started exploring for some options, talked to a few of my friends for guidance and almost all of them suggested me to get into tech. Since I had a few courses uh, of computer science in my masters and I really enjoyed studying them back then. So I decided, okay, let's take the leap of faith and uh, switch my career path towards tech. To be honest, that was not a very easy decision, but I, I'm, I'm glad that I took it because that is what is paying me off now. Now let's talk about the roadmap that I followed. So when I decided to quit my non-tech job, I had to serve three month notice period in that company. And I decided to give my 100% during those three months. And had a goal in mind that after the completion of this period, I should have an offer from the web development industry. So with the usual office hours, I used to take out time for studying and used to give some more time on weekends. So I started my learning process and started with the very basics, as basic as fundamentals of software development. And then learning HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, and then ultimately moved on to some more Web3 stuff like Solidity, etc. I took a few courses online from Udemy, from YouTube in order to learn these things and personally did not spend a lot of money in learning them because most of them were affordable and even free. One thing that I majorly kept in mind was to build projects side by side. So whatever I was learning, I was also building projects on them that could become a proof of work for the companies I was applying that I know stuff. Now, if I would be at your place watching this video, there would be a lot of questions coming to my mind right now. And the most common would be, is it enough to get a job then? I feel that most of you, even I used to think that job searching is going to be really very difficult and indeed it is. So I was applying to a lot of companies, but I was getting rejections from most of them since I had no prior experience in tech. But I experimented with the way and it worked for me and worked really well that a company's co-founder pinged me and asked me to join his company. So do you want to know how? Let's talk about that. My goal to take a job after serving my notice period did not really get fulfilled as expected. And I was unemployed for two to three months. It was a difficult time for me and I would say a golden period as well. So I had enough time to study as well as share that learning with the community. So I started creating content on web and web3 development on my different social media handles, specifically on Twitter, YouTube and LinkedIn. It was nothing fancy. Whatever I was learning, I was sharing with the community. Even I started sharing my challenges and also shared some tweets saying that I'm searching for a job. So that content sharing basically became a proof of my learning. I then started applying to a lot of companies and even applied to those companies where I was not meeting with the eligibility criteria. I started sending uh, messages on Twitter to co-founder of the companies who were hiring, sharing with them the work that I've done so far and why I would be a good fit for their company. And they started showing interest as well. And on one fine day, a company's co-founder saw one of my tweet, then pinged me on Twitter asking that if I would be interested in a role that is that is open in their company and he cross-checked the work that I was doing in that domain through my different social media handles. I gave the interview and boom, I got the offer. So personally for me, uh, applying to a lot of companies, cold emailing and sharing whatever I was learning with the community really helped me to get the job 
in the tech domain in the first place and i highly feel that these thing would work for you as well because these are the non conventional approaches that most of the people are now following these days to be honest not just this decision of switching my career domain but also following this road map was not easy i had faced a lot of challenges and you might too but it's important to understand that you are not the only one facing them and it's quite normal and here are some of them that i can recall from my experience the very first thing is lack of consistency so when you are on your own learning stuff it so happens that you give your 100% on few days but then consequently you go back to your leisure life during that time it's important to push yourself hard and get back on the track the second difficulty that most of us face is not sticking to a domain so whenever we learn something new we came across a lot of difficulties and during that difficult time if we open youtube some videos pop up where they tell you that you should not learn this you should learn something else but i used to remind myself that difficulties are going to come even if i choose some other domain i am going definitely going to face difficulty in that as well so why not stick to this one for now the third most common challenge is imposter syndrome damn this is tough so whenever uh, you are into something and you open social media some people are posting about their new job some people are posting about their new car their new home and you're like what you're doing in your life is it even worth it but at that time it's very important for you to just focus on your hard work and rest all will follow so that's all that was my story i hope it was useful for you according to me it's not really a good idea to invest in a cs degree if you have already done your under graduation or even post graduation in some other domain because you can still switch to a tech career domain all you have to do is to learn build share with the community and iterate and that's really it to get a job in the tech domain so that's all for this video if you like this video don't forget to hit the like button down below and if you have any queries related to you switching your career domain feel free to drop them in the comment section down below i will definitely try to answer them see you in the next one bye bye